Hey guys, welcome to the Anthem Extended Review Discussion. Yes, there was a lot to talk about. 50 uh, minutes was not enough, so here enough. we go, <laughs> right? <laughs> There's a lot more. It's true, it's true. I, I had to cut uh, several sections out of that review because I was yeah. like, Jesus, uh, this is going to be the first hour and 20 minute review, and I didn't want that to happen. Uh, but basically, I want to start with uh, what a colossal, uh, you know, disaster uh, Anthem has been. Yep. It's com- kind of reminding me of Fallout 76 in certain ways. Um, but honestly, I think Fallout 76 has more content it did. than I Anthem. I can <laughs> attest that I was exploring and figuring stuff out way oh. longer. Yeah, that one guy Damn. played 900 hours. Did you hear? But yeah, and then he got banned. Nine, right. Yeah. Uh, there's no way you could play this game for 900 hours. You would literally no. drive yourself insane. Yep. There are people already starting to you know, kind of hit a wall and getting really tired of it and getting really burnt out. When you could put 500 hours into Destiny. Yep. So you say what you want about Destiny, and I've said my fair share about Destiny, but, uh, you know, at least Destiny um, seems to have longer legs uh, and did have longer oh, legs yeah. uh, at release. Now, are they going to fix this? Yes, uh, eventually. Uh, let's pull up the roadmap that they have for future content uh, since this is a live uh, li- games as live service. Let's talk about that real quick before I show you the roadmap. I think this idea, EA's idea rather, of games as a service has failed. Absolutely. I mean, the, they, they called it gas to begin with. <laughs> EA has gas. They have gas. They have a serious case oh, of gas. You got to take a pill to get rid of that. And you know what? No, you just need to fucking get, get rid of your gas. Get Seriously, EA. You get rid of your gas, it's yeah. going to kill you. Um, but let me go ahead and pull up uh, the, uh, the road map. But do you think, uh, while I pull up the room, Mike, do you think anyone is going to do a looter shooter right? I mean, you know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, a lot of it, everyone that has come out. What's the best looter shooter? I already know the answer. Warframe would probably. Warframe is damn, damn good. I mean, that's free to play. I'd rather play Warframe uh, than I play Anthem. Yep. Uh, Unfortunately, even though Anthem's uh, traversal and Iron Man flight is better and the graphics are uh, more detailed, uh, but I'd rather play Warframe. Me, personally, the best looter shooter is Borderlands 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It has the story. It has the loot. Every single freaking thing you get is exciting. You have that chase. You chase for even mundane guns. You You know what I mean? Just because they look cool and they do cool things. And that's the one thing in Anthem that they completely fucked up. The loot. Not the one thing. It's one of the Oh, what I mean, that is like the major thing that they (laughs) fucked up. It's a looter shooter, and the looter part of it is completely garbage. It's boring. In fact, there was at one point where they accidentally, for 11 hours of the game, they were they were doing insane drops because they yep. did this stealth patch which kind of broke things and the drops were crazy and yep. people were having a good time because they were getting a bunch that. of stuff. I mean, I noticed and that, yeah. then they patched it out and they well they need to go back. If they you're did. if your items are this crappy, then at least give everybody a ton of was, like a, a, a immense drops. I was doing the the tyrant mine. I was doing the farming at that point. And out of nowhere, I just started getting, like, masterworks out of every chest. The bosses were dropping. So I was like, this is great. And then, like, the next morning, woke up, went to go do it. It's like commons. Commons coming out of everything. (laughs) And I just could tell that they had done something they shouldn't have done and then went way too far the other direction. So I don't know. It's just one of those things that disappoints the crap out of me because, like you said, with Fallout 76 – It was another major company that we looked up to that had done amazing story-driven games with loot and mechanical systems in the past. And they just – it seemed like this – this felt like a first-time game from a new studio. Yeah, this does not feel like Bioware felt – and it feels like Bioware had no idea what they were doing. It's almost two separate games. It's like all the hub stuff that kind of feels like a weak Bioware and then some of the, you know – open world gameplay which feels like a destiny clone in many ways just with way better traversal yep. yeah yeah uh, and and some interesting abilities uh and they could not make these two uh games work so um let's let let me get to the roadmap now i pulled it up here so we've got 
Uh, year one, step into the world of Anthem. First off, act one, echoes of reality. So get this. We're, we're really, the only thing that we're getting is fixes and improvements and optimizations, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we get a weekly weekly alliance coin. Oh, we get our coins. We get our coins. Yeah, yeah, dude. No uh, and, and daily, weekly, and monthly challenges, which if we're in the game already, that's really not I could content. buy one ember with them coins. And you're going to get the Prospero store refresh. Whoa! Whoa. So February, what kind of events are they going to have? They're going to have outlaw outrage. This is already going on, by the way. It's obviously February. So you that. got just the outlaw spawn more in the open world. Oh. I have noticed that as they spawn right the fuck in front of me. You guys, like, I, the, the open fuck world... Where from? <laughs> uh, exactly. Yep. The open world is broken in certain ways oh, where yeah. it takes the enemies forever to spawn. Sometimes I'll take damage and I can't. can't I have anything. no idea who's hitting me. And then all of a sudden, I am jack slab right in the middle of, like, an entire <laughs> enemy force. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. And if you really notice, it's real stealthy the way they spawn them in. They don't come out of the gate. They just materialize yep. into the they're world there's, there's been way ghosts. away from they're the gate. They're fucking ghosts, man. There's they been ghosts. times during events where we'll find where they're spawning, like, literally in the open in the middle of a river, and we'll just keep shooting that spot, and dead bodies just pour out of nothing. What? And so we were just like, they, they don't even try to hide it. They don't, like, build little houses they come out of. Like, Borderlands even mm -hmm. did that, where they had, like, those huts that come out of doors constantly. So we got there be giants as your titans, different yep. titans, Saper, Surge. Again, none of this stuff is, like, a new uh, stronghold, no a new raid, none of it. In fact, we have to go to March. Uh, and you get stronghold caches, new items. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. Yep. Uh, legendary missions phase one. So this legendary missions, will you please tell me why we cannot select missions to replay? Like, if they're so proud of their story, like, why can't you be like, oh, that was a really cool mission. I want to go back and replay that specific you gotta one. got to do it in quick play. And, well, quick play is so fucking broken. It's like 90% yeah. of the missions right now are not working in quick, yeah. quick play. It's I, ridiculous. I, I, I want to tend to stay away from percentages, though, because people will try it. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of Anthem defenders out there that, that are blind, and they're still in the honeymoon phase we, before they really realize. They need to watch my video over again. because yeah. and, and I can probably do a whole video where I just go into 30, quick play matches and i'll show you how how many it's, issues it's are on. almost all of them we especially during that first week like yep. if you try to do quick play during that first week 70 percent of matches you're gonna disconnect you're gonna do this it was just a really bad experience we got somebody trying to level right now and he tried for three hours last night going into quick play he got into three missions that's insane. every other mission was completely broken yeah. either it didn't ha it didn't work or nobody was there and and they have the gall over here to continue to put there be giants and outlaw rage in 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 march as well as if it's new content no you did that uh, in february and then there's cortex locked cortex locked where they don't they even don't tell even you know. what 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 is it we don't know it's probably going to be since it says free play event it's probably going to be instead of giants they're going to be ursix outrage instead of giants and instead of outlaw outrage, it's going to be scars outrage. Dude. Like, seriously, this is nothing. It's nothing. Now, you have to actually skip all the way ahead to May. May! Yep. Are you serious to get the first ray, the first cataclysm event? You have to wait all the The cataclysm starts in May. Why? Why in this release schedule does EA or Bioware think that that's a good idea to wait that long to release their first raid? I, Have they not learned from Destiny? Have they not learned from the Division? Have, lose a lot the of Division people. 2 will be out by then. And yep. not only will the Division 2 be out, but they'll probably have like new raids and stuff coming out even yep. before Anthem's first raid. Probably, especially given the they had incursions, like I think it was a month yeah. after the first game was their first raid. And then Destiny 1, they, seven days later, they released their first raid and they still haven't learned from any Does of that. Does this not prove to you that Anthem was just completely not finished? It, it that it's lacking content, it's not finished, they're, sh they're struggling and they're really far behind uh, on releasing content? And do you honestly think that, that this is going to be a full staff of Bioware? So everybody's like, oh, Joe, the content is coming. Like, no, you, 
Number one, when you release a game, it has to be satisfying. I'm so fucking tired of people coming up with excuses and these companies themselves using this as an excuse that our game will get better over time. That is unacceptable. They are putting out what's called, and this is an actual tactic. This is an executive thing, minimum viable product, an MVP, which is quite the antithesis of an MVP, yeah, right? Right? the opposite of an MVP. It's an MVP for them. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the minimal viable product that they can put out. Anthem is one hundred percent a perfect example yep. of an MVP. Yeah, because I was MVP. thinking, what are they going to do for this? What were they doing for these all these years? Oh, well, they're exactly. probably going to do something in the future. But everything you listed off, I'm not enticed to play. Mm -hmm. And I already well, lost it and when, it's I, six years. when I was playing. Six years. Six years of development, Joe. You, you there? I I don't understand what they. Here's what I want EA to do. I want EA and Bioware to come out and say, you know what? When in development, we restarted development, and we we really uh, we got things together, and we worked about two years. And if if this was two years, I'd be like, all right, okay, I, I could, yeah. So, but but six years, there's some problems there's some going problems on. There, there yeah. has to have been something behind the scenes that we don't know about, is yeah. what I'm thinking. Because there is this idea of Anthem and what they presented. This is even more insulting. Mm -hmm. They straight out lied to us. Yep. I want to point this out because I gave Aliens Colonial Marines a lot of shit for a trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it came out and it was nothing like the trailer. They were trying their best to live up to it. This is the same situation. Their own marketing material straight lie. What do they show? They show, they say, this is running in real time, in game, in engine. Like, if this is not confirmation, that this is kind of what we're going to see. Yep. And then when we get into the game, the guy moves this, this like, little cloth, and there's this massive market bustling. People moving. Yep. People don't move. In the game, the guy r runs up to you uh, dynamically. That would have made the, the, side, the world yeah. feel so much more real. And you see a Strider move. You see Striders move in all the videos and, and cool-ass cutscenes in the game, but yep. they never move in the game. That's a lie. They drop this legendary, and people are like, Joe, if there are. You, you're the lie. Why did you say Bioware lied? They do drop masterworks in the open world. It's not what I was saying. What I was saying is, look at the gun. Doesn't exist. The gun, number one, you can't tell what you get in the open world. She knew immediately what it was. <laughs> Whoa, the, the that javelin cool. or whatever. That shit would have been awesome, right? Because you're always immersed in the game. You never have to go to the fucking launch bay or the fucking forge the or the fucking... Goddamn loading screens. <laughs> the Fort Tarses. And then go back just to do it again. You have to go through like three loading screens just to like equip a different weapon or see what you got. And then another three loading screens to get to back, back in, into yeah. the game. No, hell no. What the hell are you thinking? And not only that, the weapon she gets was an elemental weapon called a volt rifle. Exactly. And it doesn't exist. And they 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 clearly in that trailer you're talking about, they show number 1 a like a fire explosive shotgun. Oh shit, and that's right. And then number right. 2 they show that volt rifle which like is these like these elemental it's weapons. Elemental weapons. They just were like gone. Gone. Yep. Probably cut out of the game so that they can give it to us. MVP, in son. <laughs> <laughs> so they can give it to us in May or fucking June. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm feeling like. And this is scandalous shit, in and my opinion. Uh, especially if you start to, and I did some research because I remember them doing a live stream of like 40 minutes of customization. And I didn't watch all 40 minutes when it first came out, but I did afterwards. But, you know, I kind of rested easy. I didn't watch it that first day I slept. I'm like, wow, man, 40 minutes of customization. Can't wait to watch this. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be great. And you got this color palette. You got all this really great stuff. But if you really notice, they kind of stay away from, like, the armor pieces. Like, they showed it for, like, <laughs> there's a 40-minute video, and it's up there in a small clip for, like, three seconds. And I paused it at like this three seconds and you can see that there are a bunch of different helmet or armor yeah. designs that I have never seen before. I don't know if these are in the game. Are these in the game? I didn't see any of them. I have not seen them in the, yeah. in, the, in the game. There's like three in the game and you've got like six or eight or nine here. And, and I'm wondering to myself, is this them all? 
and they've locked these ones here behind paywalls. That's what yep. you're going to see in the Prospero store that they're going to try to sell you in a $60 game that you already paid for. You expect that there's going to be some armor variations that they give you from time to time. But no, there's the, not a single one. And, and if this is all the ones they had here in this ar armor customization section, this is probably what we're going to see for all of 2019. And this is unacceptable. Six years of development, and this is what you can come up with. And you also look at the, uh, uh, the vinyls or the, uh, the material types. There looks to be rows and rows and rows and rows of shit that I ain't never seen. Yeah. And they're holding all that stuff off. Also, go to the vinyl section and look at all the, the vinyls. There's more vinyls there. Even crazier is the emotes. Look at all these emotes. There, you, you can even scroll down and see all these emotes. Now, yeah, they don't have the individual uh, icons for the individual things, but they're all there. Because yep. as she's switching to them, they're showing you that they're actually different emotes. And I can't find half of the emotes that are there. More than half. I can't find 80% of those emotes. And I expected those to be at release. And then they add content because that's how a game's as a live service works. It doesn't mean you develop everything and then you cut it and you piecemeal it to us. It means you give us an, a, an amazing product filled with content. You satisfy your player and then you have a staff that creates new content and say, boom, month later, here's a bunch of new items. As they're doing here in this goddamn fucking roadmap, which is hilariously uh, late, unacceptable, and it's going to kill the game. The game is, seriously, this game is going to be dead going. in like a week or more. I think more. it's going to die. It's probably already at issue. the end of its, its thing. Yep. And they expect people to play this shit all the way out till May, till over May, and over. That's the best thing they have coming out. Nope. Doing the same strongholds over and over, Joe. Would you want to do those same no. strong, three strongholds? <laughs> Dell did 70 hours 70 of, hours of Tyrant I, Mine. Tyrant Mine. Why? Because the Heart of Rage <laughs> boss was way overscaled and takes like 30 minutes to kill on Grandmaster. And the, the, the Scar Den or whatever it was called. That final boss sucks. Yeah, with the fucking so shield. So after All 70 the hours. The, the fans get more do, health with the higher difficulties. Do you feel like you've achieved something? No. No. It, no. That's no. why. I shortened my lifespan. <laughs> right. That's why people are, in my opinion, going to drop off. There are so many and, other issues with, with the game. Uh, but this is the roadmap, and this is the one that I wanted to focus on so that we can tell those people, if you're sitting there thinking that everything's going to be fine in a week, everything's going to be fine in a month, the content is coming, it's not, buddy. It's not. you got to wait yourself all the way till May to get one Cataclysm event, and you're going to get little items sprinkled here and there that, guess what, already exist in the game, but they're just locking it off for, yeah. for you. And that's and wrong. Yeah. Right now, especially just, with the lack of content in there now. And they have right now, they have so much stuff to worry about that's not working with like basic concepts of their game. Right. That they don't have time to develop extra content anyway. They have to make sure their game works because the content that's there doesn't. So they have to deal with that right now. And well, the biggest thing is that the loot, uh, Anthem, uh, Anthem's loot, it's too randomized. Yep. You made this point in the video. Tell us about why th this loot doesn't work like that. So. Everything in the entire game can have every stat in the entire game. You can get a, a flamethrower that gives you... Uh, oh, I love your flamethrower. My the flame zero gives percent you zero. That's not supposed to be like that. That just broke. But you can get like a flamethrower that gives you physical damage, even though it's a flamethrower. And that physical damage only works on that flamethrower. And it's because that when they were developing their items, they were like, oh... We're not going to bother to put what type of mods can roll on certain weapons. We're just still going to let them roll anything. And then, you know, you think, oh, if I get a flamethrower that's going to make my physical damage do more, it would work on everything. No, it it's doesn't. It's so poorly thought out, basically, yep. uh, that, that the wide range of randomness, especially when you make these masterworks so valuable or, yep. or hard to craft – Though nobody crafts because the crafting system is fucked. Yeah, it's uh, not worth it. But you, they, you could just go out in the world and grab a masterwork. You know what I mean? Uh, yep. But but an, a whole game mechanic crafting is useless and nobody uses it. That's an issue. Why didn't the crafting team or the master or that team say, hey, um, you've kind of made us useless and pointless. Yeah. Can we get some different, you know, roll numbers and things here? Can we and then the point you made with Diablo. Like if it, if it is a certain weapon type that should have certain properties that make it cool. One thing yeah. that. Destiny, not one thing, but many things Destiny gets right. I mean, <laughs> wow. Hindsight is, you know, <laughs> is a, it's, yeah. it's great. But 
each gun that you get in Destiny looks different, at least. Even if it's, like, shit tier and you're like, okay, I want to throw this away. At least you were like, oh, that, interesting. It looks different. that looks cool. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, because then... with my character, I, once I set my loadout, I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm like, this yeah. is what I'm going to be playing the entire exactly. game. And you f- not only that, but you find, like, one uh, of those uh, skills on your shoulder yes. and one of the other ones that you like. And you never change them because you know yep. you like those and those are the best. But it's not like there's a lot of options. There's only, like, two <laughs> exactly. more. And they're clearly <laughs> inferior. So you've got those locked down. So what you have weapons and then there are some weapons that are clearly better than others oh, by, by and then you have a, a small limited selection of weapons in the ones that are the best and then all those weapons look so similar in skin that there's no variation no in point. them it's just there the, they repaint them that's your masterwork that's yep. your legendary is a repaint legendaries are repainted. not not like a little cool rotating section or some fucking badass you know apex legend spartan or katana or something like that None of that shit. Uh, and, and that's what Destiny got right is that they knew that people would have an attachment to the loot, that that would drive players forward. And I can't – the loot team is seriously the worst loot uh, concept artist team in gaming. Uh, I mean, I, their like loot that, yeah. is garbage. I agree. And 100%. It, it's uh, and the way they present, maybe there are really cool ones, but the way it's presented to you in these little images, static images, and little or, or the drops when you're looking in your inventory, it's just so. Oh, at this I point, I've gotten every masterwork in the entire game. I've literally no got way. one of everything. Really? Yeah, pretty much everything. I went. Is on the there list. a table somewhere? There? Yeah, there's a full table up there on their wow. their wiki or whatever. And I went through and I checked and I had everything. Not a single one has a unique model. Wow. That I saw. I that was able to see. is incompetence. That is just like, fuck this game. Seriously. Yeah. When I learned that, like, it, it, it's as if, you know, you're supposed to have different teams. You're supposed to have a whole end game team or a concept artist team in order to make these games work. And it doesn't seem like that, especially when your three strongholds, two of them are p- completely recycled and recycled yep. in a bad way. So the other thing I want to talk about with items, too, yeah. is. The problem with the end game right now, and this is something that's absolutely horrible, and I can't understand how they let this happen, is so when you, you play your javelin, the coolest thing is your abilities. Past Grandmaster 1, you can't use them anymore. Your guns are so much more powerful than your abilities, no matter what you do, that you're going to be doing like 300,000 damage with a shot on your sniper rifle, but spamming like five or six of your abilities, not even going to come close not to gonna it. Not going to come close it's to It's not even weapon. comparable. So, but do you see how it doesn't seem like there's a dedicated team to be like, no. okay, this is broken. It's like, let's just put this in, see if it works. Okay, it works, and so let's move on to something else. Oh, it actually didn't work. Oh, there's actually a lot of problems with it. The, it, the development is crazy. They just got moved and if you think that the let's say that how many people do you think it took at Bioware to create this game over six years? I would say that there's hundreds, hundreds Probably, of jobs. Yeah. This generates a lot of jobs. Bioware is big. They're not a smaller studio of 50 people or something. There are maybe 400. Let's just say 400, 500 people at Bioware. I don't know. Uh, let's go down to 200 to give them the benefit of the doubt. Do you? So it takes 200 to develop the game. The game comes out. Do you think 200 people are going to continue – to work on all this content in the roadmap and fix the game and develop the game as it should be. And they make it seem, and if you look at this, it's Act 1, and then later on it's Act 2, and then it's Act 3. And they have these really images that make it look like, oh, man. And the way they teased at the end, bit of a spoiler here, the way they teased a new faction at the end of Anthem mm-hmm. that maybe they're going to come. Do you honestly think that they're going to be releasing Anthem 2 for free in that kind of nope. way? Hell no. What's going to happen is this large team of 500 or let's say 200 200 employees is going to get cut down to a skeleton crew. They're going to get moved to other projects within EA and Bioware or Bioware, if this because this is Bioware, Dragon Age 4, unannounced project, and you're going to get a skeleton crew. of And, and these skeleton crew, you're more talented. What do you think? Well, you're going to leave all the talented people here. They're going to take the heads and the talent. Yeah. They did a, did a good job to make sure these other games are good while they leave behind a skeleton crew of people that are working their asses off trying to fix what, this, what they left yeah. behind. Meanwhile, add new content and test new content. So I discovered something last night. I joined the uh, Anthem Theory Crafting Discord to talk with people, and they showed me evidence that the game had been horribly chopped up and that a lot of things had been removed. Oh, sure. Prime example. So remember Sev, the Australian from the Tyrant Mine that talks to you? He's a Corvus agent. He's yeah. like that Australian guy. 
the tyrant mind mission, you get it. Yeah, lo- I know. Level ten. They talk to they they bring him up like you already know him. They go, hey Sev, and he's like, hey freelancer, how you doing? Yeah. You haven't met him at that point. However, the mission that he it gets introduced to you is the the uh, mm-hmm. stronghold you get at the end of the, end game. the game. When you go into the scar one, they're like, hey, I'm going to introduce you to Sev, even though you've already met him. Yeah. They cut it out of order. The missions are completely out of order. Mm-hmm. And Faye, you know the the chick that's got mental issues because she heard the anthem yes. that you meet. Right. When you go into free play for the like. Even before you meet her, she's the one talking to you. Yeah, I know. So they they chopped the story up. The game has been completely broken apart. This, this is evidence it's of uh, some kind of yeah. reassignment, recycle, re uh, project, yep. reboot, or something in the middle of development. There's, because it, it, you cannot tell me that they had a vision, a perfect vision, and they executed their vision perfectly. Because this thing yeah. feels cut up. It feels piecemeal. It feels untested. Here's the crazy part. All those day one patches that the fans are like the mega. Well, I shouldn't call them fans. Now, there are people out there that enjoy Anthem and it's false. They say, yeah, it's got some faults, but I like it, too. And that's perfectly yeah. fine. I love you guys and you guys are the best because I, too, like flying around in Anthem. I'll, still play, I'll probably still play a little bit more of it. But at the same time, I could still point out these criticisms and according to them being negative no it's called crit- you know critiquing, critiquing a game yeah. which is our job um and still be able to play it or still want it to do well and i want it to fix itself but um the point that i was making is that that day one patch this huge long list and some really critical things in there made me believe that that early access for origin members was basically a beta test Like, what were they doing in the beta test? Like, they just, what I'm trying to say is, I feel feel like nobody in Bioware actually played the game from start to finish before it released. And nobody from finish to end game, nobody played it. It doesn't matter what kind of gamer you are. You would notice certain things. And that's just what type of gaming you are. Developers playing it would notice things in their own game. So and it feels like nobody played to, and then they released it and then a week later they realized all yeah. these things like the two missions not setting off for all your friends. Now they fixed that in the day one patch supposedly and then they also rolled it back to where when you start Anthem all those things are being yeah. fulfilled like from mission two or something. You're building it up. But when we got there. It was a wall. You had to do it all over again. You're like, wait, 50 enemies? Like, I killed 50 enemies already. You want me to kill another 50? And 15 chests, which turns into 60 chests, 15, 15, 15, 15, because all your friends are playing with you and only one person gets ready. We bailed out on them. 60 chests in this open world free play where once you open the chest, that's it. And you have no idea where these chests are. There's no indications. And you can't ping on the map. You can't even share information information on the map and you don't worry joe you can get them from world events and then you have no idea where these world events are where they happen if you die and you have to go back to the world event you forget where the world event because everything looks the fucking same okay there's just so many problems as you can see destiny had world event markers on the map so somebody what i'm saying let me take this over dale because i'm really fucking (laughs) mad Somebody at Bioware had to play through that with their three Bioware friends, developer friends. Did not one person notice this? No. Oh. Yes, they had to have, which means that they released it anyway, which means that they they knew the incompetence and they were rushing to get it finished. And it proves all my points that Anthem is a completely unfinished game, a rush game, oh, which yeah. makes no sense to say that after six years of development. I, I honestly think they had a completely different game and product before EA was like, how do we break this up? And I feel like they had this whole thing laid out. They had a dynamic story. They had extra characters like the guy that got cut out of the trailer. And they were like, okay, what are we going to sell over the next year if yeah. the game's done? And they were like, we want this cut out. We want this cut out. We want to put this later. Make your game work yeah. without it. If they started right now and they we give them two more years, this would be probably one of the most amazing games because I can see where they're going with it. I can see what they intended, and and 
if they had let some people into Bioware to play, which is funny because I've been watching a lot of reviews. I found some game changers, even game changers talking shit about the game. Yep. And then they'll drop every once in a while. Yeah, I went to Bioware to play the game. And, I, you know, when I was playing it there, I was having fun. And then, and then oh, I, I hate to be negative. I can't be negative because they're like having this internal conflict with themselves. Yep. And I can't I, I don't want to point anybody on blast, but I watched this video and and I'm like, dude, ju you know, just, just say it. That's your job. You say it. Stop trying to protect the developers. Yes, they're good people, but guess what? They get paid. You know, yep. it's not like you, they get they're doing this for free and you're shitting on their work and they'll they just go home and cry. No. They get paid and and we need to make sure that management over there understands that the way they manage this game, the way they manage their uh, talented developers was incorrect because it resulted yep. in a product that is so m mismatched and you know incomplete and piecemealed and non-functional just look at the state of the end game look at the state of all the I things I mean so they were working on this when Andromeda was being made and Andromeda's crafting system and gear system is better than what Anthem came out yeah. with like Andromeda had stats that made sense your biotic weapons are going to give you biotic cooldown stuff like that like you could do really cool builds in Andromeda I just did not like the multiplayer in yeah. in Mass Effect and it feels like that Bioware is just not strong at making multiplayer no. uh, or something because, you know, in that multiplayer, they had fucking, you know, the consumables and the drops and yep. stuff. And it was just kind of boring. So many to go systems through. have been completely boring. And maybe these people just do not know how to do uh, a looter shooter. Yeah, and that's just the well, result. Yeah, this was not a social game at all. Because even nope. when I was with groups, th they would leave me behind. I've yeah. never talked to anybody once. Right. So that was and and that me. is. Uh, points out and uh, the things I said about the open world and trying to ping things and ping chests and ping world events so that we can get chests and we can fill these objectives. Apex Legends has completely revolutionized gaming. Yep. It's I'm not I'm not joking. Uh, uh, something so derivative. Oh, it's a battle royale. Oh, it's the scraps left over from Titanfall 3. Yeah, it is all those things. But it actually manages to do something that a game better than any other game before the pinging system. When I ping something, I can ping individual items I, and that and your character says blue blue shotgun here, you know, and they automatically talk for you. So if you're a timid, shy person, you don't literally have to get on the mic and say, hey, there's a, this shotgun. Do you want this it's thing over here? Amazing teamwork, just, too. <laughs> you could just look at it, click it, and, and the you're character in character says a funny line, too. And then, yep. you know, puts that's what Anthem needs very, very badly. And they also need to keep the players together. So when you're going through the cutscenes, let players come and, and experience the story together. At that, and that way, not only are you satisfying the players who want to start the game and go all the way through together because that's what I wanted to do with you guys yeah I wanted yeah. to fire up the game and go all the way through together and you could not couldn't do, do that you, you couldn't do it you're, you're just you get so fucking annoyed with each other you yep. do this and that you well, know but if they had le allowed you to go to the hub area together we could sit through the cutscenes together like, could, all right everybody shut up now and watch the cutscene no instead I'm watching something while y'all are fucking talking in the background and I'm like shut the fuck up <laughs> so that I can hear the guy damn story you know it's it felt, it's poor design decisions it felt like they didn't want you to play together because even simple things like being able to do quick play with another friend to join missions to level up you know hey i want to go level hey i need to do these quick plays can't do it with friends for some reason their matchmaking system cannot handle two people joining quick play at the same time <laughs> it just won't let you do it anthem is fundamentally uh flawed I'm not sure that any amount of updates can go in and fix some of these things. No. I think that I just don't think that Anthem can achieve any better than a maybe a 5 or a 6 out of 10 until Anthem 2, until a completely new game where they get new management and new design directors that to get their shit right. Because, I mean, there's just – it's crazy. And I think it's a result of them completing re completely restarting work in the middle. They had you, to. It, because, look – the first hour is great. I went when I was editing the review and I was going through all my footage. I noticed a stark difference between the first hour of the game and then it drops hard yep. and it's just a grind. And then you hit the two mission and you want to quit. Most of my friends oh, fucking quit. Yeah, I was, Joe, pretty much done. I was quit. done. Just like quit. after yeah. that, you get no satisfaction. You go Zero. in there. 
you get some little thing. Oh, yeah, you go in the tube. That's it. I was like, <laughs> you have a load screen for a box. I was expecting, I was like, all right, fine. You, you want me to do all this bullshit to open this? And then it opens up, and there's this big fucking adventure at tomb. You're like, yeah. Oh, what challenge is from this guy who is the, oh, he was the sniper, so I'm going to have to make you sniper weapons. Shoot, like potted pl- pl- No, you yeah, go in there. Like it that, is yeah. literally one room with the old yeah. dingy fucking, fucking mummy, and he farts. <laughs> and <laughs> as you greet him or whatever, fuck it. You, you yeah, like, you I, I it, lost it. After I, I got it, you. I looked back and she was like, "What was was that?" Is like, yeah. That's you go it. to the you like, go to the tomb the of like fuck? the grand architect who was known for his amazing building <laughs> creations. You go in there, he's got like a. Like a countertop. It's granite. It's a nice countertop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best. He's got a few pots <laughs> and uh, pans. <laughs> this is a pretty good countertop. But yeah. that's, that was it, man. You know, uh, but what I'm saying it. is, so I went through all my footage, and the first hour is great. If it continued like the way it does, and see, this kind of fools players, and then yep. they, they justify their purchase, and they're like, oh, Anthem's great. Because that first hour is amazing. It really is yep. like, and then Owen is, and then Owen is n- actually outside of his little area that he's always at. He's waiting for you, and then this lady comes up with the Sentinel, and it's just so cool. And then it drops off, like it, it was like a nine out of ten opening, and maybe even an out of eight out of ten because in the first hour they do still they do two horde missions. Remember, uh, protect the signal. The second Th- that's the second mission in the yeah. game. The third mission in the game is bring the orbs. So there was already even problems in the first hour where you know everybody in the they studio was wor- was common yeah. swinging, and they still put these shitty missions in, right? And then the game completely drops off or gets insulting with the two mission. But then it starts to pick up again at the end of the game, and I was looking at the footage, and it's about two hours at the end yeah. that is highly polished, Lots of directed cutscenes, lots of tension and interesting. Even though they fucked those missions up, there's one mission I cut at this point out of my review. I was like, oh, gr- oh I'll show you here. Wow, this mission is also really bad. I mean, we've been standing in one spot the whole time. That's the point of the mission, stand in one spot. I'm not joking. You have to recreate the general who stood in one spot millennia ago. So now you must stand in one spot. Riveting gameplay mechanics tied directly into the story. Stand in one spot, everybody. That mission, it, you know, is the general mission where you're supposed to recreate what the glorious general does. What is the mission? Stand in place and kill all these enemies. Or, no, you got to kill Titan. Too that you already killed. That, no, the end. Remember on the oh, steps. Oh yeah, the final one. Yeah, yeah, just stand in place as people come, and you were already doing that. Stand in place for the radio signal. <laughs> stand in place for the. My this. favorite part is when they were dialoguing. They were like, "She fought so hard. She was mortally wounded, and she was overwhelming." And you're just like, "Bop bop." Yeah. Bop bop. <laughs> bop. And she's like, "Ah, she was dying, and it was so <laughs> and difficult." And you're like, and "You're just like," and you're like, "Yeah, this general kind of sucks." <laughs> Like, I know the point they were trying to make is yeah. that she's so awesome and shit and that she's the best and she created all the freelancers. And you're like, bitch, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> there were four of us. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's and just. That's why I think it was cut up, man, because yeah. like the beginning and the end are really good. And it's like EA had a hot dog and then they were like. Let's cut the ends of the hot dog off and sell the middle again later on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, and they put the hot dog together and we're like, it's not that big now. Or they rebooted everything and then they were like, okay, let's make the good. Uh, we let's we'll start up a really good ending, really good uh, start, and we'll fill it in. We're running out of time. Fuck it. Oh, we are totally out of time. It's way too short. Put in the two yep. mission, an artificial roadblock. That's what happened, guys. I'm I yeah. that's I feel like that. Anyways, um. Just let me just start spouting off stuff and we can talk about it. You pick your face and you never see it again. <laughs> you don't. Yep. You remember that? To be, there was supposed to be like a transition scene from the E3 demo where you see a character's face mm. and you're supposed to like when you're getting in your suit, you're supposed to see your face. You never see Yeah, face. now that you brought it up, I completely You remember forgot. that? No? I, f- I forgot what I picked. <laughs> I forgot what I looked like too. Yep. But that could have been at like that loading screen. Here's yep. an idea. Let, let us see. Because you know the storm one where he's like... That looks cool. I could watch that literally all, all, yep. all fucking day. But, yeah, get more elaborate one where I can see my face getting in and or something like that. And let me move the camera around, too. It makes me wonder during if there loading. was supposed to be cutscenes where you were out of your suit talking to people and yeah. it was supposed to show you. And then they were like, nah, we don't want to do that. Yeah, probably. It's just everybody in that marketplace is just standing in place. Like, They're why like, does nobody move? Hello. Why do they not go about their business? 
Show you know, this. there needed a dynamic day-night cycle or whatever that sometimes they're in the, this area, sometimes they're in that area, sometimes they're not around. I know that would probably annoy players, so they would have to be around, but just not always in the same spot. Or you go there and they come up and they, they put down some goods. Like, you, you're helping this chick's bakery or some bullshit, and then you're combining this bakery with the fruit thing, nice. but it – you never see it. You never, she never like moves. feel it. She never moves. Like she could have come up with a bunch of like baguettes and shit, and like, oh, thank you so much. Look at look at what we're about and to so build here. But no, she didn't do that shit. She has multiple dialogues. You literally just go into any load screen after she says, "I'm gonna head off and go get my stuff." Go into a load screen for like one second, <laughs> come back out. There. She's got another set of dialogues. She's like, "I went and did all this stuff," and you're like, like "No, you no, didn't." Did. Thirty <laughs> seconds. <laughs> and I just I hate Prospero, guys. Like. They, I do too. This game glorifies Prospero in such an evil, manipulative, sinister way. He's like, you got to look good as you go into battle because they're really trying hard to sell that shit. Well, that's why I do what I do. I sell the thunder. If every freelancer can invoke the same awe I felt that day, you'll win every time. Always fun talking to you, Prospero. See you later. Back at you. I hate disingenuous shit like that. It's like if you don't like look that. good, you're nobody special. Yeah. All, you mean you mean all those cool armor pieces that were in the game that you cut out of the game so that you're going to sell us later in these stupid featured screens that people are actually buying? Because I see people that – I see that Bumblebee one for, for uh, the Storm. Yeah, though his – because I hate, like, the barnacles. Yeah. I want to reduce the barnacles, <laughs> and that paid one kind of does, and I was like – Fuck you. you, you pay may, for it, I can't believe you made me consider that. I oh, spent 60 oh, fucking close. dollars, and I was like, no. If this game was the game it should have been, then yeah, did maybe. You, did you talk to him after you saved the world? If you talk to him after you saved the world, he's like, how you been freelance? He's like, oh, saving the world. He's like, you should buy her something nice to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. He's like, you should you <laughs> save the world. Why don't you get something nice? Dude, that – Prospero <laughs> is like, stop is, pressuring me, man. <laughs> Prospero is corporate commander guy. Yeah, I'm serious. In, in disguise. disguise. <laughs> if you ever wanted to know who's under that mask. Freelancer. Thanks again for your help. Business is already looking up. Selling the thunder, huh? Hey, people laugh, but the uniform makes the soldier. Ever seen the Dominion? They know it. If you want to win a war, presentation is half the battle. You have to inspire fearful awe in your enemies. Plus, it's just cool flying in style. <laughs> that it is. You seem pretty passionate about this. I love what I do, and it's important. I want to help the good guys win. When a freelancer shows up in their javelin, I want people to remember it. Your enemies will shudder, your allies will salute. I like the sound of that. A little thunder and lightning to make an entrance. You get it. Why do people fear a big storm rolling in? Probably because it can kill you. That's right. So you just let me know if I can fix you up with anything. A javelin's always got room for more thunder. Will do. See you around. He's Despite like, yeah, you saved the world, but <laughs> do you got spinners on your javelin? <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, but... Oh, um, okay, so... There's so many combos in between missions. That's how you convey the story or characters. Uh, but it kind of makes you dread talking to people when you're in the groove and you want to go back out and fight. They should have had more <sighs> of the characters out in the open world where you encounter them and they talk to you in the open world to yep. get those contracts. And that's you know that Russian guy? I, I think he's Russian. He, his accent is very hard to nail yeah. down. Uh, but he's like the protector of the lore and the contracts yep. guy. He should be out in the field. And you should meet you know? him dynamically. And you should meet him in yep. out in the open world, but they never do that. And you can go from contract to contract. Well, if you, if you look back at the – and I wanted to talk about this too. If you look back at the, the E3 gameplay trailer, I think they intended for that to be a thing because when you're first introduced to the Ursix in the gameplay trailer where they were playing, yeah. it shows an animation of an Ursix picking up dogs and slamming them down. It's all done already. It's actual gameplay. The Ursix is like killing frost dogs, throwing them off a bridge, and it's like, this is an introduction. This is an Ursix. Stay the fuck away from yeah. it. Every time you see a new creature, there should have been something like that. Yeah, that and it's they like, just oh, cut it all out. It was done. That's yeah. what I don't understand is that sort of introduction was done. Well, I, what I think that I think that's all bullshit. I think yeah. that that was just solely created just to show off at a presentation, and they're like, "Yeah, we'll we'll hit that. We'll we'll do that later. Soon. And we'll do that later. Oh fuck, we're uh yeah, no, we can still do it. We'll do it. Don't worry about it. Uh, no, we're not gonna be able to do that. Um, just okay, cut it. 
but uh, maybe we'll sell it later. I just want to. <laughs> I just want to play whatever that demo was because, like, yeah. they. So that was the other thing too is they didn't just. You know how Ubisoft has this reputation of like downscaling things. Mm -hmm. You go back and watch that trailer, and I've watched this comparison video like thirteen times. They didn't just downscale the graphics or the lighting; they stripped like eighty percent of the object detail in the world. All the plants in the potted. I don't see. I I do see that. Yeah, I was about crazy. to disagree with like you, the but town. then I realized it. The open world is less detailed than the stronghold world. Yeah. They're two separate worlds, guys. Yep. If I noticed it in my footage. Remember when I'm flying around, I'm saying, oh, my God, this is so amazing. That's actually the Tyrant Mine stronghold where everything is so lush, so dense. Yep. But then you go out into the open world and it's, and like it's, it's less. There yeah. are good looking areas for sure, but it is less. And that's because you are in, in a stronghold. You're instanced, yep. right? And you're going through the whole thing. There, you know, it shares some similarities, but then you go in and doors close, which was ridiculous because that led to players People not being stuck. able to get past yeah. the door, getting stuck. I got stuck several times. But I was just talking about the town. Yeah. The, the video, you look at the town comparisons. There oh, were yeah. baskets of fruit. There were, like, goods on tables. There was, like, People. bunches of Kids People buying around. stuff. It was kids. like so much deck. It was static objects too, stuff that wouldn't lag the game yeah. that much. Well, that's the thing. They fucking lied, and I yep. want to hammer this home again. Look at what she says here. At the heart of Anthem is the concept of our world, my story, the unique combination of a dynamic, ever-changing world and a powerful personal story. Back within the safety of Fort Tarsus is where my story begins. This is your chance to develop a richly personal narrative where your choices have consequences. Your choices? What, you, uh, what choices have your consequences choices matter, in Joe. this game? Yeah. None. none! There are none. absolutely fucking none. This is straight lying. This is overselling. And then it goes on. And then... Fort Tarsus is ripe for exploration as well. You may even encounter shadowy figures with questionable character. It all depends on the decisions you make. This is real-time storytelling. A reinvention of personal narrative in a multiplayer game. Meet people with questionable, you know, Motors, back, shady yeah. back. What? What are you fucking you talking about? Like that. that, and then I was like, okay, let's try to be as fair as possible. What the fuck are they talking about? And it's probably Princess whatever her name is, right? And, oh. But in that trailer, you notice how they show off her city, her mm -hmm. area, as if it's Fort Tarsus, because they're talking about Fort Fort Fartsis, Fartsis right? Yep. Fartsis uh, from Skill Up. And, uh, but no, it, it's like these aren't the same places. In fact, this place is way better, and yeah. I wish I could have yep. explored some of that, but it's all a cut scene. And I guess that's the shady thing, so I guess they qualify that in a, in a league so that in court they could legally defend them themselves <laughs> that but, that was princess but your choices matter is bullshit but period like yeah, that your that's choices sort of fucking matter do not matter and then it was all. like interact with your crew and your strider and they'll help you customize your mechs no they don't do any of that stuff. shit nope. none of that stuff exists it's just like the legal definition <laughs> of the it's an mvp it's a minimum <laughs> viable product because he does technically what you know in those cutscenes where they're all like hey how's it going and they gotta <laughs> get, hand me that Screwdriver, and then they're like screw driving a tube. Yep. <laughs> hey, you I, I still like you have. So like, technically, they did work on her. They works. upgraded your. They did customize by giving you the shield that allows you to go on the heart rage. So if they ever go to court, they're legally protected. But you know, they oversold we, that shit. I mean, like you already have a mechanic. She's standing next to your javelin launch yeah. bay in town. In the in the like the old preview, the E three one, she's got like goggles on. She's working on your javelin. She looks like an actual mechanic. She got grease all over. Now you got some some chick that she just stands, stands there. there, and then <laughs> you just go up and talk to her, and you're like, what? Did you do well, you know, one of those girls is completely pointless. She's so pointless. Uh, the 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 Tony, you know, she's a mobster family. The regulator yeah. chick. Yep. Her store is Prospero's store. store yeah. and there's no difference between them. Yeah, she's got a funny voice and she's kind of cute, but that's 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 it. That's it. That's, yes. I mean, what's her point? Well, they got this voice actress, so they need to use her. Let's create a whole separate shop for her. I thought my mechanic was going to like. And then my suit. mechanic yeah. talks about her. She's like, oh, my God, that girl's like bringing in. And say, she's right across the way. Bitch. <laughs> she'll fucking hear you. Keep it right down, here. Miss. That girl in the market, Serna. She seems like quite the character. If she actually brings a Korox into the fort, it'll be one for the history books. 
I don't know if people understood the joke that I made because I was like, these are all the positives of Anthem. And then do I like it? No. And the first thing I show when I'm rage is that mechanic yep. Zoe saying the same thing over again. I don't know if this is in your way, but she keeps talking about Jack. She's like, are you and Jack in some kind of hero competition? I'm like, no, Ben, <laughs> you said that already. Are you and Jack in some sort of who can be the bigger hero contest? That's the third Sentinel patrol he's rescued from Scars this week. And that was literally like the fifth. I counted them, and I should have done a supercut. That was the 15th time she had said that within about three hours of gameplay. But when you're constantly going back to the hub area, and that's the first thing she says, it pissed me off. Did that so not happen? No, it game? happened to me. A lot of the NPCs said the same stuff over and over again. But later on, I mean, I was like, for Christ's sake, by where you couldn't come up with like nondescript greetings, like, hey, hey, freelancer, what's up? What's up, you dude? Know, I can listen to, hey, freelancer, welcome back, 15 times. But if she goes, are you and Jack in some kind of competition? Because Jack. just last week, Jack came back with three kills. Shut up. So every week he's getting three kills. I was like, I saved the damn world, bitch. Shut up. <laughs> are, that, are you and Jack in some kind of competition? I won that competition. <laughs> I, I destroyed the heart of rage. This game is going to fucking kill me, man. But All no, right. like, again, she... I thought maybe she would have some point in the story, but Zoe never talks or anything, that the the mechanic chick. Yep. And it's like, are you going to upgrade my javelin? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? No, she's she just like, no, I'm just going to say that you suck compared no. to Jack. <laughs> <laughs> right, but no, she's fluff. And supposedly when you're not looking, she works on your javelin to fix it because it's all bullet Except holes. Do you the trailers, know they she showed is? her actually working on it. Right. But, you know. better. Right. <laughs> they didn't have the budget to record those 30 seconds of extra voice lines. Like, hey, how's it going? Okay, so now it is, we've been talking, having fun. How do we fix Anthem? You don't. I will, I'll fix Anthem for you, Bungie. Or, uh, Bungie. I can't believe I said Bungie. that. It's because Better Bungie missions. is a hollow of its former self, and now Bioware seems to be hollow and nowhere near its former self. Anyways, so I'll fix it for you, Bioware. I you know, hope you're watching this video. Here's how you do Anthem 2, okay? Okay. Uh, what was the most fun missions in uh, <clears throat> Anthem? Well, the first tiny bit, which, no, I don't agree with because you have two of the it mundane was, was piece mundane. of crap. Maybe the first mission was an all right opening. And then a lot of the ending story missions, right? But what in between there? The strongholds. Actually, Tyrant, no. I know well, you, I know uh, you played it to death, but the yeah, first time you play a stronghold, you're like, wow, this is multifaceted. Look at this big boss. This is great. Now, could you imagine if instead of all these filler contract missions of looking up salvage, bringing orbs to a basketball, uh, bringing orbs to <laughs> literally guarding tentacles, rocks. guarding rocks. That was, was a mission. mission. I know. I you didn't believe you, but you guard were, a rock. There. I it's got a special to it. rock. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of those. We had 15 levels, 15 strongholds. Basically, each level is a stronghold with cutscenes, a boss, almost like a monster hunter where, hey, there's like 15 unique bosses, yep. and these relics do different things. So you go into stronghold number seven, and this, this one has a shaper relic, which makes gravity fucked up. So you cannot touch the ground in this one. It's literally just flying and you're shooting and flying. And then the next one is uh, it messes with your memory. So there's a little bit of cutscenes at the beginning. And then in the middle of the mission, they kind of repeat the cutscene, but in a different way. And you're yep. like, wait, what just happened? And then they, you know, they fuck with your mind. So you have like these individual little set pieces, like 15 different stronghold missions. And, and when you do something like that, then people, and, and those little fun gameplay loops, they wouldn't mind playing those on Grandmaster over and over if there were more strong. Could have done something really cool, too. Like, could have, because they talked about how artifacts can manipulate time, too. <coughs> they could have had, like, a Groundhog Day puzzle where every time you do the puzzle wrong, your so character puzzle. dies and <laughs> <laughs> right back into where right. you start. And then it's like, do it again. Remember what you learned. And it's like, every time you just keep dying over and over again. There's so many so potential many cool for, things, for yeah. the Shaper stuff, and they don't do it at all. And there's so much potential in Stronghold and the world bosses and they don't do it at all they recycle titans and the the most unique looking boss in the game is the tyrant bug the spider the spider and i guess the final boss you know the monitor it, the monitor and it's just oh, what the fuck man and it, when you release and then and then people are like 
I want to pay you money. When you satisfy me with 20 fucking stronghold missions yep. and, and I can repeat those whenever I want, choose the specific story missions I want to replay, then you build a community. Do you remember that one time? Oh, yeah, how I solved that one. And, yeah, you solved that one. I did this one, this one. I did, I did that Shaper Relic on Grandmaster 2. You know, that kind of stuff. But here... It's the same shit. It's the same three strongholds yep. over that are already recycled amongst those three, and all they do is damage scaling. And there's no, like, unique boss. The boss patterns in this game suck. Yep. Like, the way they attack and, you know, the, the re telegraph, it's just not fun boss It's fight. not dynamic. They don't mix that it up. That tank sits there in the middle. They sit there and just stand that there. That tank sits there yep. in the middle. And shoots at you with seeker missiles. It doesn't even look at you a lot of the time. It just uses auto tracking missiles. This is the laziest thing. So I, I'm, you know, so if you had something like 15 contract missions, and then you had uh, with the side missions that are already in the game, use those as the filler stuff in between the filler contracts and the world That's events in the open world, and do it like, and do the loading like the division. Because the Division 2, we played the beta. We didn't like it that much. Hopefully, the main game will be better. But at least uh. the Division 2, you fucking load, and you're playing. For a long time. For a long fucking time. Yep. You go from mission to mission. You open your inventory. You get drops. You equip your new machine guns. You look at yep. your machine In guns. In the world. And I honestly, right now, I'd rather play the Division 2. And I think the Division 2 might be a better game than Anthem. It will be. It's be. So even if the Division 2 is boringly average, it's, it's better. It seems competent. If it works, it's more competent. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, that's that's one of those things where we, we're saying, you know, if they had had more strongholds, those are just missions. Like, if you look back at all the right. mass effects, they those are just <laughs> generic <laughs> missions. Yes. They don't. And they, they I'm the over here begging for them and thinking it's this crazy idea that you give us 15 strongholds. What, Joe? No. Like, look at Halo. Halo 1. <laughs> they're literally 15 missions. Any and you can play effects. them on legendary. And they're multifaceted. And they have different <laughs> elements. And there's cutscenes with ships and shit. Yeah. It's, and You're just they can't even do that. Joe, they've brainwashed you. They make you think that the old standard <laughs> right. is Excuse apparently me, can over I the please, top please. now. <laughs> One it's, more stronghold. <laughs> it's yeah. May, may I? Uh, may I have one more stronghold? <laughs> no. <laughs> Six months from now, you may have one. And I swear to God, if at this point they recycle more assets for all this content that's coming out, we're gonna I fight more be scars. A new Titan appears, and it's the same Titan only red. He's blue. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But you gotta pay ten dollars for blue. Oh right, ten ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, blue. I thought the open world was gonna be like more like Monster Hunter. You see all this cool dynamic uh, new Hunter species and everything. Yep. Yeah. And it would have been sweet. Like, you see animals like, interacting with, with each other, Monster Hunter. Like, a jogger yeah. comes out, eats a bunch of little animals, swallows them whole, then goes away. And you're like, what the fuck is that? What? That would have been this, amazing like, to see like in this game. Happens. Yep. Nope. I mean, people have put in 600 hours of, uh, into Destiny 2. Yeah, there's people a lot have of People have put in 600 hours. And when I hear that, I don't immediately go, you're fucking crazy. I go, okay, I can see how you could put that yeah. because there is a chase. There's an addictive loot yep. element. Your guy can actually look different. You see how cool these designs are, and you could see these things up front, all the work There's that went PvP. into the armor and the and PvP, which is endless pretty yep. much, and you, and you start to appreciate a game like Destiny, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and so I, what, what's happening in here is Bioware and Anthem is just lowering the fucking bar because the game is so shit. Yeah. And those fans of Anthem, their bar is so lowered now that they can literally Yeah, they're just trying to see how, how bare minimum do. they could do and get Hold away my with. beer. It's hold my beer. I could do a worse looter shooter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that is that what you're doing, Bungie, for, for, for uh, Destiny? Hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> Fall straight on their face. Like I'm not. I'm. It's, it's best Destiny to laugh. Destiny 2 is really good right we, now, we by gotta, the way. And we're aware of that. It's a lot better. What? Destiny 2 is way better. Right oh now. yeah, no, I've, I've heard. Game right well, now. I, I, right I don't know. Forsaken is. people talk like Forsaken completely changed everything, and it's like the best thing now. It, it's, it is better, but it's not what they think. This don't try to be conned into thinking it's a completely different game in the sense that. It's like Destiny 3. It's not like Destiny yeah, 3. I mean, it, they it just got shit right. Yep. And they're so used to getting shit wrong and getting half measures. Oh, they got it right. and the, But they're holding it up like, you know, it yep. is 10 out of 10. It's not. It's but. like an eight, it's 8 or 7 right now. I went back and tried it. So Yeah. 
But this is – and that no, was – No, they did a good job. I think that was the biggest comparison. And that's why this. I'm hoping that away from Activision, maybe we're going to see something fantastic from, from Bungie maybe for Destiny 3. If they even want to keep Destiny going, they clearly do. they do since they, they do, wanted yeah. the rights to it. And they pull, they, they're they like, we still own the rights to yep. uh, that. So we'll see. I mean, it was just, just playing these looter shooters <coughs> before I got into Anthem because I played the Division 2 beta. I went and replayed the Division 1's endgame just to get familiarized. I tried Destiny 2 for a little bit again. And I was like, okay, I get a good idea of what a good looter shooter is now. Anthem is the worst looter shooter. And then I play Anthem, and I'm like, did a five-year-old figure <laughs> this out? Like, yeah. what the hell? This is – this like, it was just so mu- – a lot of my problem is I when I was thinking about it after I get away from it for like 10 20 minutes I'm like, yeah. I start thinking I'm like it's 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 incompetent but not terrible then you go back in and you you notice things like no character sheet mm-hmm. you know half the stats don't make sense they the pacing's all messed up you get introduced yeah. to people after and the you just grind the enemy AI is incompetent the they just stand there. shitty and it's just uh, so bad. the grind sucks and a lot of people think oh Joe you're an idiot because obviously there's going to be a grind this is a loot shooter there is a grind yes and, and don't say grind, is, it's a bad because it's grinding. That's not what I'm saying. There are good grinds and there are bad grinds. And Anthem is a perfect example of a bad grind. It is, and it, like I was saying, it's, I thought about it, and the <coughs> more you think about it, the more you realize this is the most incompetent looter shooter that has ever come out. Ever been released. And it's, it's so basic mistakes. Like the simplest yeah. stuff, like a stats page, gone. And it's like nobody played. It just this. feels like a skeleton crew made the game. Yeah, it feels like. And then, and then the more talented people came in for a little bit, built something, yep. then left, and then the skeleton crew had to find a way to fit it in. It feels like this was made by twenty to thirty people over six years, and like you said, people got moved in and out all the time because this, this is not Bioware proper for six years. There's mm, no, no way. fucking way. It, it is. But that's the thing. Maybe a this, small no, little group. But stop like, it. Yeah. This is Bioware. <laughs> they released this product, and they deserve the blowback that they're getting. Yeah. Honestly. If, if you start making – if you all start fucking making excuses for them like that, then it's never going to change. All right? So yep. this – they need to learn from this. They need to be like, project management was bad on this one. We're sorry about that. Here's why. Uh, and this is when this is when we're fixing it, and uh, yeah, it's great, it, and and hopefully you know we'll get this back up to speed. I still want to give half the blame to EA though. I feel like they had to have fucked. With yeah, stuff. but you know sometimes it's not. Sometimes yeah. it's not EA. I know we want to put all the blame on EA because it's fun, and <laughs> they're a shitty company, and so is fucking yeah. Activision. Yeah. Uh, but you know sometimes, uh, sometimes the the dev no. side the uh, you know developers fuck up or whatever but uh, that's kind of what happened here so i'm i'm hoping uh, the fact that all the content on this roadmap comes out so late uh, we you've got a dead game on your hands it's, dead. it's only so going to get games worse going to come out by that time and exactly they're probably going to do it better and people aren't going to come back you're going to be developing for a smaller and smaller audience and this is business remember ea is the publisher here's where we can start blaming ea ea is going to be like I need you guys to finish uh, Dragon Age 4. I need you guys to finish Unannounced Project number one, et cetera, et cetera. So they're pulling people off, and it's going to be harder and harder I job mean, to go along. They Especially sh- in the games of service where there's no $40 expansion pack. They plan to do all this stuff for free, yep. which was commendable. But if really all you did was barely develop something, minimal viable product, and then you're going to get the rest, that is not how we want it. That's and not we, how we wanted this deal to work out. And we have to remember, they shut Andromeda's studio down and – dissipated it for a 7 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the Metacritic score, <laughs> and that wasn't good enough, and they destroyed that branch. I, I actually liked Andromeda more than I liked Oh, by Anthem. far. And, by far. And that's what makes me so worried and, and about if you're an Anthem fan, I don't know if you're going to see an Anthem 2. Yeah. I, I really don't know. Especially, we need to see these sales numbers. I don't know if the news story is coming out when I post this, or it's going to come out later, or EA is going to do their best to suppress that news story <laughs> that they didn't get the, you know, 10 million, or no, they readjusted it like six or seven million. They want six or seven million copies sold by the first. They need to do later. some drastic now. <laughs> How are they going to sell copies if people I, are I doing know. the subscriptions? I have no idea. That's what I don't understand is I didn't buy it. Nobody I know bought they it. Traded Everyone was like 15 bucks. Yeah, they traded a whole game development away for a boost in subscriptions. I, that I don't I, know if I, that's going to work. That I was already subscribed to for everything. So I essentially just kind of got this game as a freebie. Me too. <laughs> Same with OJ. Yeah. <laughs> so well, There are so many out there that, that buy it at, at 60. And uh, for y'all guys, I understand your pain. And it's it's pretty bad, guys. Um. Yeah. So Anthem any, sucks. 
Anthem sucks. But I, I, I'm not one of those that gives so much praise to them fixing something that comes out broken. Like, that's not, you're no. not getting extra praise from me. You're getting thank you. You know, that kind of thing. Yep. Because <laughs> they're going to have to work their ass off to bring it to Destiny 1 whenever that launched, because that was even better. Destiny than this. Was yeah. 1 was two they points better. They have a whole yeah, yeah. bunch of work to do. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, and then they've got the new content. So maybe they knew the disaster state. That's why the first Cataclysm comes out in May. I'm, uh, all these things I talked about where nobody at Bioware seemingly went through the game themselves they and played Endgame. They had to. So they had to know that this would be a disaster. They had to know that it was this uh, fucking mangled and broken and, and a mash of different things that yep. didn't quite work. They had to know that, and that's why the roadmap is the way it is. Yep. All right, guys, that's it for this extended discussion. We could probably perhaps do a whole nother one, yep. but I got to cut it short here and to prevent this from going way too long as well. Um I, I do hope that Anthem does get better, but if they decide to do, I'm sorry, if they decide to do an Anthem 2, it needs to be completely, completely different yep. and uh, go in with a completely different design philosophy. Keep your, your multiplayer uh, people together. Don't separate them in the hub areas. Just have them go through the story together. Borderlands this shit. Make a single-player game with co-op. Like, make a single-player <laughs> game and add co-op. That's what mm -hmm. you have to do. That's what Bioware needs to make, do. Make the baseline missions yep. strongholds. Then add raids on top of those. Then add a bunch of generic free contracts and open-world shit, like, like what makes up this game, mostly. And yep. pinging. <laughs> and <laughs> pinging. Everybody in the gaming industry that has a type Love of game it. like this... Copy Apex Legends. Copy them. Now, right. I know it's complicated because you have to build trees, and this tree references when you're looking at this building, then this character will say this line saying, hey, everybody go to the hospital. I know it's difficult, but you have to do it. it worth it. it. It's, it'll be totally worth it, and people will continue to play because you have that great gameplay hook over and over, and that's all you need. And all right? You know, the, the one last thing to say about Anthem is, like, their systems are so broken right now, like the loot. They couldn't fix that without fucking over everybody that already grinded for it. Because well, they'd have no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they can't. They yeah. would basically you'd lose the rest of your players. If you go and you're like, we need to patch this, we're adding new loot, we're making all your old loot useless, or mm -hmm. we're nerfing your loot because it's too powerful or too weak or blah yeah. blah blah. Everyone will quit because you don't the people that suffered through that and grinded that's for it. That's why it's so important yeah. to get it right the first time. And that's why you can go through twenty hours of the game and not get a masterwork, not get a legendary, and, and they didn't think about, oh, maybe before the end before they ended they hit the story, let's entice them Give to them do the few. grind. Let's entice them to do the end game by popping in one masterwork, by popping in two or three. And and now there's the majority of players who've already gone yep. through this game and realized, fuck this, I'm not playing no more. Joe has never gotten a legend. He's never got a mask. He never masterwork. felt that. Never felt that. That disappointment. And then <laughs> and then when you get to you, when you actually do get them and you see they're all fucking broken, yep. that is ruined. Because yeah, now you're going to have to do another you seven. <laughs> no problem. You're going to have to do another 70 hours once to they get fix that yep. to get a good one or, or to get ones that aren't broken, to get the actual experience of 71 hours of great masterworks. But honestly, they're not great because the way they're designed. <laughs> And I don't think they have the concept artist to make each gun look completely different. And, and then they actually do, and they start doing that. All the people that played is like, what? Man, fuck you, man. You better give me a few of those on these drops that I spent so much time. And fuck. Yep. Ah, and they throw shit. You know? <laughs> I still just. That's it. Yep. Anthem is a fucking mess. It was a disaster. Everybody kind And here's the thing. Everybody's railing on it. But when Anthem was being shown... There was something wrong there. We felt it and mm -hmm. you felt it. The amount of excitement was never really there. There was always just something there. And I, whether that was maybe was well, made by EA or maybe, you know, this it's a looter shooter. Yep. I don't know what it was, but I never got to that level where I had complete confidence in Anthem that it would be, you know, good. I think it, it was and it was coming off the back of Andromeda and coming off of the Battlefront crap. And we. We distrusted Bioware well, and we distrusted EA. Well, what I, why, why I'm smiling and why I'm looking about it in a positive way, I think the general gaming you know, consensus kind of felt this, felt a disaster coming, felt like there was something wrong with Anthem and it came out and there was something wrong with Anthem. And so I'm kind of like happy that we kind of sensed something before as a gaming community as a whole because I saw a lot of people you know, putting 
forth questions about Anthem and Essen, and Ned gets shouted down by diehard, you know, Bioware fans and, and diehard looter shooter and people that just wanted to believe. And, and that's fine, but, you know, it's also good to because what if some of these criticisms and questions would have come up sooner and helped Bioware make a better product and helped EA realize, okay, guys, we're going to delay Anthem from February 15th to the end of the year. We want to make the best product we possibly can, and we want to give Bioware another year to work on it. That would have been completely okay with me. Yeah, it would have helped. I mean, if they would have done the play test and then realized, oh, shit, we need a lot of work. And we need, like, seven more. We need five more strongholds. They didn't fix bugs from the freaking tech test three weeks prior. Yeah, like the, the bug spawn in the tyrant mine where the bugs don't spawn. That's yeah. still there. And and the doors close and get locked. Yep, and, yep still there. Still there. So yep. all this, that's crazy, man. They're, they must already be on a skeleton crew. They that's have to be. crazy. They man. couldn't fix game-breaking bugs they knew about like three, four weeks before the game came out. And, the de- and, and then finally, the decision to not drop armor pieces, to not drop vinyls, to not drop wear states, to not drop uh, paint schemes, to not drop... What are some Anything of the other customers? You can't even earn them. You can't even earn you, them. Yeah, you can. It, it, they're very fucking few, rare. Few, Buried yeah. in the menu. If you get to loyalty three, you'll get a decal yep. or whatever. But to not have those things drop in new armor, new head pieces, new, new arms, legs, torsos, and save it for goddamn Prospero and a vanity store and a $60 fucking game, fuck you. You deserve a little bit of this that's happening, this flaming you know, <laughs> uh, wreck that you have released. Anyways. But you got to look good when you save the world, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how much is that going to cost? Eight dollar. By, t- by the end of so making yeah, it look good. I don't good. even get a discount so for I look saving di- the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I look different from everybody else. It's going to cost me $120. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.